What's up guys, my name is Zombie and welcome to my blade review. What you see before you is the Benchmade Adonis 275. Now this bad boy was designed by Shane Siebert and is manufactured by Benchmade Knife Company. The blade steel is D2 with a HCR of 60 to 62, which is very good. It's very easy to strop back to factory edge. The blade length is 3.82 inches or 9.70 centimeters. The blade thickness is 0 0.160 inches or 4.06 millimeters. The open length is 8.70 inches or 22.10 centimeters. Closed length 4.88 inches, 12.40 centimeters. Handle thickness is 0.73 inches, 18.54 millimeters. The sheath weight is 1.50 ounces or 42.52 grams. It is a manual opening knife. It is an axis mechanism, much like every other bench made. Well, they have frame locks or liner locks now. Incredibly smooth. I've carried this every day for about two years. I've only just started putting oil on it because one day it squeaked and I didn't like the squeak so I added a little oil and after a day of using it again it worked its way in and now it doesn't squeak. So very good endurance on the mechanism. Very low maintenance has been needed for this. It is D2, so it will rust on you if you get it wet, so make sure you oil it. It does have this very nice wear-resistant coating on it. I got mine engraved for the extra $5. I got mine directly from Benchmade. I did not go through a second party. Now, my finish is scratched up a little bit right there at the tip. My camera will focus. It's not going to focus, but you can sort of see it. I don't know why my camera's not focusing. But, got a little bit of scuffing there. That's from cutting aluminum cans. But, other than that, blade finish is fantastic. It is dual thumb studs. And if you are familiar with Benchmade's axis lock, it is completely ambidextrous. Works from both sides. The pocket clip is fantastic. It's probably my favorite pocket clip on any folder I've ever owned. It's a loop over design. Two screws. I haven't needed to tighten this clip, adjust it in any way. I kept it the way I got it at the factory because I'm a righty. This is right hand tip up carry. It, the coating on the clip is different from the coating on the blade. As you can see, the coating on my clip is wearing off from two years of being put in and out of my pocket every day and banged against walls and everything else. But nice thing about Benchmade is you can contact them and for like five bucks or so, you can have them send you a new clip for your model. All you have to do is tell them what your model is. And another great thing about this is if you do not void the Life Sharp warranty, you can send this puppy in anytime you want to Benchmade. And granted, you provide proof that it does not void the warranty. And you can have this thing taken apart, cleaned, relubricated, resharpened back to its original glory so it'll be like it just came right out of the box again which was a very exciting moment for me this is my most expensive folder ranking in when I bought it it was two hundred and ten dollars plus the five dollar engraving you know zombie but that's because I wanted to get it straight from Benchmade because I know the quality control is really good and I cannot find a flaw with this knife now, you probably heard me say that this sucker weighs quite a bit. 
ranking in at 7.68 ounces, this is not a light knife by any definition of the meaning light. It is heavy, it is bulky, but you know, it's almost three quarters of an inch thick at its widest point. I will be back with the comparison. All right, moment. I am back. So, as I was saying, the knife in itself is not small by any means. The blade is 3.87 inches, I believe I said. I put away my measurement sheet. Compared to the very well-known Spyderco Tenacious, if we line them up butt to butt, you can see that it's a pretty big knife. The blades are very similar in length, which, you know, I do believe the Adamus is longer. I just think it's the shape of the Spyderco and this angle looking through my viewfinder that make the Spyderco look like it's the same size. Now, if you look at, wow, that was a funny noise. If we look at handle thicknesses, a lot of you guys know what the Tenacious is like. It's a cheap knife. It's not expensive. You can get them on Amazon for 30-ish dollars. This is the black one, so it's going to cost more. I got mine from Bass Pro Shop. I kind of got cheated a little bit. That's when I didn't know how much these went for. But you can see the thickness of the Spyderco versus the thickness of the Benchmade. It's an astronomical difference. And for a lot of people, you think... Spyderco, that's a big folding knife for EDC. Well, this Tenacious was my first Spyderco. And, I'm off camera real quick. My second Spyderco <laughs> was this Resilience, which is a 4.25 inch blade. So that's a big step up. And I personally, oh, almost got cut. <laughs> the fun's of playing with knives. The Benchmade is very similar in size to the Spyderco Persistence, which is the biggest folder in the Spyderco value line. I like the line. This one's a satin and black. I'll do a review on it another time, possibly. But. The Benchmade is very close. The blade is obviously longer coming at, uh, on the Spyderco, coming in at 4.25 inches compared to the 3.87 inches on the Benchmade. The handles are basically the same length. Actually, the Benchmade's handle is slightly bigger. And take the Spyderco off camera. It's not needed anymore for comparison. I really like the handle on this. Now, I take a large glove and they fit kind of snug and I'm choking up all the way so you can see how much excess there is on the bottom which is really nice so you can get a great purchase with that amazing thumb ramp. I like Spyderco's thumb ramps. Uh, they're jimping I find digs into the end of my thumb and that has always bugged me because if I go and I Stab something, I don't want my thumb to come out like torn up. Now this jimping is, it comes down onto the frame, into the G10 and in the liners, steel liners. Massive stop pin. But, sorry about that. I got a text on my phone, which I'm using to record with. Um, th this jimping is deep. It will grab the meat of your thumb, like it's not going to slide but it's not too aggressive to the point where it's going to hurt. But, you know, purpose of jimping is you don't want it to slip. So if it hurts a little bit, I mean, and it saves your hand, then, you know, trade-offs. And also, the fact that it has this 
bit of a finger guard here. When you grip it, if you tug on the bottom of the handle, your finger is not going to go over this piece right here, which I like a lot because you can, if you're into stabbing in this direction or if you do it in the other direction, you know, ice pick grip, that you're not going to slide over this bump and onto this edge. Granted, I have almost guillotined the finger off of this thing when I first got it because I'd never used an axis lock before and I was playing with it because, you know, everybody who has an axis lock, they love flicking their knives because they're just so buttery smooth. You know, that didn't really show in frame. But, fantastic. Um, the edge degree is kind of wide for some people. Now, I see this knife as utility. This knife is my utility, and if I need to, I will use it for defensive. Now, it's not the fastest opening thing in the world, but the fact that it's not a frame lock with a detent ball means if you move it in this kind of motion hard enough, the weight of the blade will cause it to fling open and I like that feature I've mastered it almost and it just it's not as fast as like an Emerson wave I don't own any Emerson's I own like the Kershaw Emerson collaboration is like $30 it's like one of the, the Tanto model but I think this would do a number on anybody you stuck it into I mean look at how thick the blade is and a lot of people say the thinner the blade the better yes it will enter easier, but, I mean, I'm going to leave a bigger hole. <laughs> and this thing will screw you up. I mean, not the longest blade in the world, but it's wide. It's thick. It's not going to break. Like, if I had to in a defensive situation, I'd, I never want to have to hurt somebody with a knife, with a gun. I don't own any guns yet, but... I never want to have to use my tools on somebody in a defensive situation, but I will if I have to. And that's the reason why we carry them, because it's preparation for what could go wrong. And I like being prepared. But yeah, it's got skeletonization. It goes all the way through the metal liners. The holes in the metal liners on the inside of the knife, you can see right there. They are bigger than the holes in the G10, and I feel like the holes in the G10 here are this size because I can sort of fit my pinky in, uh, not all that much. The blade won't touch my finger. It won't cut me. So, smart move on making the holes in the G10 smaller than the holes in the skeletonized liners because if they did that, you'd be able to stick your finger in and guillotine a pinky off or something. And you don't want to lose a pinky while using your knife. Not fun. I've been cut twice really bad. One on the tip of my pointer finger. Can't really see the scar. And one on the tip of my thumb. Both Tantos. I don't know why Tantos love biting me, but they do. But... So this thing came with a really nice edge. It's really easy to clean up. I just use the work sharp field sharpener. It's the little hand sharpener. It's got the leather strop and the rotating ceramic rod for you know finer work and it's got the two diamond stones on it. I've never had to take a diamond or a ceramic to this. I've cut through aluminum cans. I've beat on trees, wood. I have cut a ridiculous amount of vines off my friend's fence because he was sitting there with scissors like an idiot and wasn't getting anywhere, so I took my benchmate out and I helped him and we cleared all the vines off of his fence in his backyard, which is a chain link fence. And I did actually smack the edge against the chain link. What'd it do? Nothing. I put, I put a ding in the chain link fence, which is great. This D2, I give it an A+. It holds up. Fantastic. This coating as well, I have stabbed an unknown amount of crap with this thing. It's got a little bit of wear right at the very tip.
because my camera's being stupid, it's not going to focus for you. But you can sort of see, you can see the silver line right there. Yeah, I've, I've put this knife through its paces. And a lot of people who get this knife, they say this is the only 7.8 ounce knife they will carry. And I, I can understand why. When I watched all the reviews from Such Double O and a bunch of other reviewers, they all got the tan versions. I don't, I, I like black. I like it not being seen. I live in New Hampshire, so there's no sand anywhere. I don't have a need for tan. I don't really like it. But after seeing stress tests that Benchmade did on it themselves and how much force it took to take this thickened axis lock, yeah, this lock is thicker than the average axis lock. That lock bar is thicker. Somebody went out and measured it. I don't remember how much thicker it was, but it was thicker, and damn does it do a job. They put it in a machine that applies stress on the back of the handle while it holds the blade here. Seven, 1,717 pounds per square inch was what it took to have a soft deformation of the lock bar and the frame. Not, a, not like the handle blew off in a massive explosion, but it just kind of bent a little. 1717 pounds per square inch that's a ridiculous amount of force so this thing if you're military if you're law enforcement you want a good knife that's going to go through basically anything you want that can do you as i was saying i had to go do something if you are military or law enforcement and you want a knife that can be a backup defensive weapon to your primary handgun and you don't want it to be a baton I mean you can use your baton you can use a knife you can use whatever you want it depends on how close the altercation is but if you are in the military or law enforcement and you're looking for a good high quality well made sturdy as hell tank of a knife that will do any utility task you can reasonably think of. I mean, we're not cutting titanium. Like, who who cuts copper pins on a daily basis with their knife? No. Like, your normal cutting tasks. If you're cutting zip ties, this thing's going to blow through them. Like, I cut through industrial zip ties with this thing. It was pretty easy. Like kind of put a hole in the cardboard box in the process, but that was just because the cardboard was weak. This is, in my opinion, a fantastic knife for the money. Um, my grandfather used to tell me that $60 was ridiculous to spend on a knife. I paid one fifteen for this, plus shipping from Benchmade. So, I'll leave it up to you. The price from Benchmade right now has shifted. It is now up to 230 And if you want laser engraving, Ooh. knock my tripod over. If you want laser engraving, it's an extra $5 for something simple. The price increases if you want like the whole blade laser engraved on both sides and stuff like that. If you get crazy, it's going to cost more. It takes up laser time resources whatever this will not break the bank it's not a praetorian tie like from medford knife and tool it's not a todd todd beg bodega it, it's not it's high end but it's not break your bank like i don't want to use it kind of high end I, I got this because i looked at my spider coat tenacious and I thought, I like this. I want something bigger. I got the Spider Co Resilience. And I looked at that, I was like, I like this, but I want something stronger that I know isn't going to break under more stressful use. Like this tip, this tip is thick. This, the way they grinded this with the swedge and everything, it's, it's, a, it's a broad tip. My camera won't focus today. I don't understand why. But it's a broad tip. 
has handled everything I've put up to it. Stabbing cans and crap like that. Coating. Like I said. But I, I totally recommend this, hands down. It has jimping in all the right places. It's not too aggressive. Jimping here. 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 And here, and up on the thumb ramp. In all the right places. If you don't want to use a thumb ramp, just choke up a little more. It's comfortable using like this. I like doing this for detail work if I'm like woodworking with this. But, yeah, this video has run long, way longer than I thought. But yeah, all around, hands down, fantastic knife. I would totally recommend it. You can get it for cheaper than what they are selling it on Benchmade's website for. Like I said, I went through Benchmade directly because I wanted the Life Sharp guarantee and the lifetime warranty and all that, and the insane quality control that they have. And I got everything that I looked for in a knife. Big, black, this sounds so perverted. <laughs> but, you know, big, robust, Jesus. God, I've watched Jim Skelton too much. <laughs> Love his reviews, by the way. If you haven't heard of Jim Skelton, search him on YouTube. Watch his reviews. If you like knife reviews, he does knife reviews on some of the most insanely beautiful blades I've ever seen in my life. Blades that I would hope to be able to own one day. You know, one day, maybe. If my business works out that I'm building currently. Prototyping phase. <laughs> but... This is fantastic. Everyday carry. I forget sometimes I have it in my pocket. Like the the human body adjusts. Like people who carry pistols, they sometimes won't even feel that they're carrying their handgun in their waistband. And that's because you get so used to something. Like if you've never worn a belt before and then you wear a belt for a few months, you're gonna get used to wearing a belt. You're not gonna notice it anymore. You know, you get a bigger phone, after a little bit you're going to realize that the phone doesn't really feel big anymore. It's just normal for you. And that's the glory of adapting to your environment. By the way, this is a backspacer made of G10, just like the handle scales. Very smooth G10. It's smooth, but the grooves they've put into it... It, it gives you the perfect amount of traction with the jimping in all the right places. I don't care if this was like glossy, glossy smooth. It's smooth, like it's really smooth, but it's like if you made this like super ridiculously smooth, like glare ice kind of smooth, it, there, there wouldn't be a problem. I would still feel confident if I had to use it to defend myself. So yeah. Designed by Shane Siebert, made in the USA, D2 steel, Rockwell 60 to 62, G10 handle scales, steel liners, ridiculously tough lock, dual thumb studs, ambidextrous, and you can put the pocket clip on either side. It's tip up only carry, by the way, and adjusting the pivot super easy. Um, I've only adjusted the pivot one time, that was after I first got it, because I was opening and closing it so much, just to make sure I broke it in enough, so it would be smooth, and I opened and closed it so many times, it was ridiculous, I slightly loosened the pivot, nothing bad at all. Blade centering is, like, almost perfectly spot on. And yeah, the edge degree on mine is a little little funky, but honestly, it even with a messed up edge degree, which I don't necessarily blame anybody for, it happens with freehand belt sharpening. When my knife that has a messed up edge degree can still cut better than a full flat ground knife that has a perfect edge degree and it will last longer and it'll do all these things way better than honestly I don't care that it has a messed up edge degree I don't care that's not like hair popping sharp that I can't shave with it 
it does its purpose, and it does its purpose extremely well. I am Zombie, and this has been my Blade Review. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. Subscribe, drop a like, share with your friends. If you know somebody who's thinking about getting one of these, share the video. It, it helps out. I'm small, trying to grow. Fantastic knife. Totally recommend it. Peace. All right, last minute addition. I forgot to put this in the main recording. It comes with this box because it's a Benchmade Black, the tactical military. Um, it's a manual, open, yeah, under the tactical classification. It comes with a very nice sheath. It's, it's a snap. It goes in the belt. Has a. I'm not using a tripod, so bear with me. This is a mully attachment, so you can put your sheath on your mully gear or on your belt if you are a law enforcement or if you just want to carry on your belt. And it has like life sharp. Oh, and this uh, Ranger card. So. This, it's a Ranger Assistance Foundation, and it's a charity, so every time you buy an Adamas, whether it's the fixed blade or the folding version, from Benjmade, they help out that foundation, which is great, support the veterans, you know, Second Amendment, America, you know, but support the veterans. You never know what they've been through. They all deserve our support. Thank you. Have a nice day.